back to the Real Estate Minute, where I answer your questions, talk about what's happening in the real estate industry, and give you the latest money in real estate news. Now, you can find the latest episodes here on my YouTube channel, Expert Real Estate Tips, every Monday and Friday. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's right up here, or maybe it's over here. I don't know where it is on your channel. On today's episode, I'm going to answer a question I received about when it may be worth adding your children's name to your house title and how that might affect the taxes that they pay. So a homeowner, a mom of one, recently wrote in to ask me the following question. I currently own a home that's paid in full with no mortgage. I want to add my daughter's name to the house deed. What are the pros and cons of this decision in terms of the taxes I'll pay or she will pay? Now the short answer to the question is that adding your daughter's name or any child's name to your house title could have really serious repercussions when it comes time to sell the home. For federal income tax purposes, if you simply add your daughter's name to the title, she receives the house as a gift at your cost basis. The cost basis is a technical term, IRS jargon, on what it costs you to buy the property plus any material, material improvements you've made to the house along the way, like replacing the roof or um, replacing a bathroom, but not redecorating the living room. If you were selling, the cost basis would also include the cost of sale as well. So if you paid $100,000 for the property, say 20 years ago, and now the property is worth a half a million dollars, wouldn't that be great? And you give your daughter half of the house, her cost basis would still be $50,000 or half of 100,000, which sounds like a great deal. And like all things financial, there are a few caveats. So when the property is eventually sold, right, your daughter would be entitled to take the first $250,000 in profits tax-free if she's single, up to a half a million dollars if she's married, and she lives in the property along with her spouse or partner as her primary residence. However, if she isn't living in the property when it's sold, she might have very significant capital gains taxes to pay. Now, if she inherits the other half from you, right, she would inherit the property at the current market value. So if you gave her half, right, that was the $50,000 of the $100,000, and she inherits the other half at $250,000, that's $300,000 as her cost basis. If she then immediately sells the property for a half a million dollars, and she's living there as her primary residence, then she might not owe anything because $500,000 minus $300,000 is $200,000 and she's allowed to keep up to $250,000 tax-free. You can see how complicated this can be. And this mom, just like you, would want to talk to her tax preparer and her daughter's tax preparer to make sure she's handling this exactly the right way. The bigger issue for me is why so many people want to use quit claim deeds to simply hand over control of the property. I think it really has something to do with probate or how control of assets change hands after a death. There are other ways, better ways, to deal with this rather than using a quick claim deed to simply slap someone's name on the title and hand over property as a gift. You could use an inexpensive trust to make sure the property flows to your owner of choice after your death while you still maintain control of the property while you're alive just in case you need to sell the property and use that asset to support yourself. The very smartest thing you can do is talk with a real estate attorney or an estate attorney before you sign and file legal docs. Remember what I always say, read twice, read first twice, then sign. Thanks for watching this episode of the Real Estate Minute. I'm Elise Klein. If you've got questions about buying, selling, financing, fixing up, or investing in real estate, you should send them to me at questions at thinklink.com. I'm also happy to take your personal finance questions. You can also find me online at glink, at G-L-I-N-K, at Twitter. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.